We are going to talk about the definition of your pH and the pOH, which we actually mentioned these things in the very beginning of this chapter. pH is this, pOH is this. So you can see the pH is actually calculate your proton concentration and then your pOH calculate the hydroxide concentration. And then the only things make it become pH or pOH is simply because you take a negative log. If you know the proton concentration or the hydroxide concentration at equilibrium, then you can calculate the pH and the pOH of your solution. So one thing that's very important is that, okay, this things has to be at equilibrium because only under that situation, your pH will be a constant value. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually we're going to use water as example to calculate the pH. So what's the pH of water? Seven at what temperature? Yes, 25 degrees C. So every time we say the pH of water is seven, that is only true when your temperature is at 25 degrees C. Otherwise, your pH of water will vary. What we're going to do now is actually going to show you that. So this is actually the chemical equation of water, okay? Water is going to dissociate into proton and the hydroxide. At 25 degrees C, your Kw or Keq is going to equal to 10 to the negative 14. Then we want to calculate the proton concentration and the hydroxide concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so what is the concentration of water? That's actually the things I wrote here. That is the concentration of water. It's actually a very high concentration. Then we are going to use our ice table to find out what's the concentration of my proton and the hydroxide, right? So initially, because the K is so small, right, we assume everything actually exists in the reactant form, right? So the concentration is 55.56. Assuming it haven't dissociates. Small portions of water is going to dissociate. It's going to produce your protons, produce your hydroxide. And then we are going to reach equilibrium. So that we have 55.56 minus X for your H2O liquid. X for your H plus. OH X for your OH minus. So next one is actually what I'm going to use, apply the KEQ to actually get your X. So here the things you want to be careful is that when you write out your equilibrium equation, you can see here I only put H plus and OH minus. And the main reason is because the pure liquid did not go into your equation. This is why you're going to write. Okay, so let's actually X times x. x squared equals to 10 to the negative 14. So the x is going to equal to 10 to the negative 7. And then that's going to tell us that your proton concentration is going to equal to your hydroxide concentration. It's equals to 10 to the negative 7 m. So once you know the proton concentration, once you know your hydroxide concentration, if you take the negative log of that, that give you the pH and the pOH, which is actually the things I wrote here. Okay, so your pH is going to equal to seven. Your pOH is also equals to seven. That means actually you have equal amount of protons and hydroxides coexisting inside your solution. But the concentration of those things is actually very low. Okay, so they're actually very far away from each other. They don't actually feel each other. All right, so one very important concept you should know is actually this alpha, okay? Alpha is called the percent dissociation of the species you're actually working on, okay? So in this case, it will be actually the percent dissociation of water. It was defined as the proton concentration over your reactant concentration times 100%. In whole level actually, okay, what is the percent dissociation of a certain species, okay, and that's the equation you're going to use. 
So if you do this, your proton concentration is 10 to the negative 7. And then your water concentration is 55.56. So if you do that calculation, you can see that only 1.8 times 10 to the negative 7 percent of your water will dissociate into H plus and OH minus. Very, very small amount. Okay, with all this calculation, we have this table, right? We know the temperature at 25 degrees C, the concentration of photon is 10 to negative 7, pH is actually 7 for your water. pH is actually 7, right? Photon concentration is left, okay? Your pKW, okay, which is your, this guy. Take the negative log of 10 to negative 14, that give you 14 here. That's your alpha, okay? That's your kW. Everything is actually at 25 degrees C. Now, if I ask you, if right now I increase the temperature of the reaction, how these values I highlighted here will change? To answer these things first, things we need to actually see this equation more carefully. H2O, let me so say, into H plus and OH minus, and the delta H is equal to 56 kilojoules per mole. What does this mean? Is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic, right? When you say endothermic, that means actually into actually heat up the system so the reaction will move to the right. Right now, we're actually comparing the temperature at 25 degrees C. So think about this. If I increase my temperature, okay, larger than 25 degrees C, how would that actually affect your proton concentration? It is an endothermic reaction, right? That means actually if you increase the temperature of your reaction, the reaction is going to move to the product side, which is the side that contains your proton and the hydroxide. If the temperature is actually larger than 25 degrees C, would you expect your photon concentration to increase or decrease? Increase, right? So you know, this thing is going to increase, okay? It's going to be larger than 10 to the negative 7 N. Right now you have photon concentration larger than 10 to the negative 7. If I say, that is my photon concentration. pH is actually, if you take the negative log, of this, what do you get? <clears throat> Five, right? So you know, if you have a larger than 10 to the 7, your pH is going to smaller than 7. How about your alpha? Does your alpha increase or decrease if you go to higher temperature? Alpha is actually the proton concentration over your H2O concentration, right? You're going to have more protons inside your solution, therefore your alpha is going to increase. Your Kw is actually the product of your proton concentration and your hydroxide concentration. They are the same amount. So if you go to higher concentration, what happened to your Kw? Increase is actually 10 to negative 5, right? Your Kw is actually the square of that is actually 10 to the negative 10. So is that increase or decrease? Increase, right? How about your PKW? It's going to be 14 or smaller than 14? Smaller than 14, right? So let's actually, the things that you have is the temperature increase. Okay, and then all these parameters will change accordingly. If you go to a temperature that's actually less than 25 degrees C, it's the opposite. Okay, so this will decrease, decrease, larger than 14, smaller than 10 to negative 7, this will be larger than 7. One last question. If I go to this case, if I measure the pH of water higher than 25 degrees C, I got a pH value that's smaller than 7. Is the water acidic, basic, or neutral? So if you go home, ask your mom, okay? Mom, 
is water acidic, basic, or neutral? Or would you tell you? Neutral, right? So what does this mean? What it means is just like, okay, it actually represents the concentration of your proton. It doesn't change the nature of your water. Your water will still be neutral because you have the same amount of proton and the OH minus, right? If you have increased the proton concentration, but at the same time, you also increase your hydroxide concentration, right? They will still cancel each other. They are still neutral. Even if you see the pH is below seven. So if you actually go to different temperature, the neutral value of your pH also changes. No, regardless of temperature, your water will always, always be neutral. Okay, the pH just tell you quantitatively how much protons you have inside your solution. I hope this give you a good thought exercise about okay, how you actually can calculate the proton concentration in the aqueous solution. Okay, and you should also realize that the pH smaller than seven is not necessarily equals to the solution is actually acidic. Okay.